Sorry. Hey, great. Okay. <laughs> well, let's introduce ourselves again. Okay. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> We're so happy you're here and we are so excited that you're here to craft with us. So we are in the Silhouette headquarters. My name is Sam. And I'm Liz. And we blog at prettylifegirls.com. Yes, we're sisters and we're moms and makers. And we, I said a second ago, but we are Silhouette Loyalists and Michael Loyalists, two Michael's. of our favorite, most essential craft brands. And everything we make with those, with we make, we use one or the other. It's so true. It's either from Michael's or Silhouette or both. Together. When I'm having a bad day, my husband knows to just send me to Michael's. <laughs> And I'll just wander around. And then I come home happy. Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. So anyway, thank you again for joining us. We are going to be making these signs. They say, e-learning in progress. Please don't ring unless you have cookies or teach math. And this resonates with us. I have since put my child back in school <laughs> because it was such a struggle. But for the first few weeks, I had my little boy at home doing first grade completely online. It was so hard. So those of you who are doing it, those of you who are sticking with it, or those who don't have a choice and that's all you have, bless you, we're with you. Our thoughts <laughs> Our are thoughts. with you. And there's nothing more frustrating than when your kid has settled in, they're focused, they're doing good, and then someone rings the door. And so that's what this sign is for. We are only letting in the essential people cookies or math. if you teach math don't come to my door when i'm teaching the kids right <laughs> unless you can help me yeah. unless you have something to offer in some way exactly so what you need for this project you need a wood plaque you could do this one that we got at michael's you could do a square one you could really use anything you could do it on a canvas whatever you have around whatever fits your taste You'll want some wood stain if you're doing wood, some paint. This is folk art home decor chalk. You will need some vinyl or stencil material, a silhouette cutting machine, a stencil brush or regular brush, brushes, jute, staple gun. You get yes. the idea. If we left anything out, we will surely show you. Yes, as we go through it. So the first step for this one is to stain the board. So Liz, <clears throat> let's have you start on this. Okay, I'm gonna make a yeah, little let's spot. cover the table. There are so many different shades of stain. So just pick one that fits your personality. You could even paint it a color if you wanted it to be bright <clears throat> or something. So something oh, yeah, you a could color do. would be really cute yeah. if you have a favorite paint color or that's all you have at home or whatever. Yeah. Um, something to note with this board if you got this exact one that we did i think it was art minds oh <laughs> it's fine <laughs> um it's art minds and it's a little bit rough so you could <laughs> okay. i don't know if i can recover we'll repaint from repaint their table splattering the entire <laughs> could we get more real than this <laughs> have you ever splattered the table oh my gosh it's because <laughs> this brush okay so this brush has been used to stain and then and if you don't hard. like, you know, <laughs> so what we should do <laughs> is go to Michael's and get a fresh brush. But anyway, go on, talk about the board. <laughs> okay. This could not be more like what it's like to craft with us oh, on a it's regular basis. always a nightmare. But, okay, so sorry. But we pull it together we in the end together. every time. <laughs> please, okay. Please go on. All right. So as you can see, this board- I feel like I'm painting with a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. Okay, there's really? nothing brushy about this. <laughs> okay, go on. Okay, really though, this board is pretty rough. So when you paint it or when you stain it, it'll be okay. But when you stencil it, it'll be a little trickier. It will bleed into all these little cracks. And thank you. Oh, an oh. angel has brought me another <laughs> kind brush. of brush. Perfect. I mean, this brush was a great brush. It's just, it I used was. it to stain it right yeah. now. Okay. Oh, As okay. I was saying, yes. if you want your stencil to be super crisp, that's our next step, then you might want to sand this so it is more smooth. What we did, which we'll get to a little bit later, is 
we left it rough. We paint, we st we stained it, mm -hmm. did the stencil, painted it, and then we took a little brush and touched up the edges. So if you like it to look more rough like this, mm -hmm. then just be prepared to touch up the edges. And maybe if you like a little bit more rough, you get a smooth one and then you rough it up with some sandpaper or something just for ease of use, whatever you got to do. Yeah. So if it's smooth, you could stain it and then go at it with like some sandpaper mm -hmm. to make it a little more rustic. Yes. Yeah. That cute. would be good. Okay. You're doing so good, Liz. I'm, I'm really cruising. We now had that a I rough this start, but <laughs> it's all going to be um, okay. So sorry, Silhouette, about your table, but you, we'll signed, paint it. you asked us to come. So you should have known <laughs> what was what coming you were getting for you. Into. Okay. There okay, you go. Perfect. So we're going to let this dry with the magic of technology. We have a dry one ready. Can you switch that yes, out? Yes, let me just very carefully. Not that it matters this. since there's no nope. water anyway. Okay. Okay, so we're going to bring this one in and set this one over to dry. We don't need this right now. All right, so now we're ready for our stencil. So I'm going to share my screen here and show you what we do now. So we're going to open Silhouette Studio. Good. And we are going to go in, let's see, can I move this maybe? How do I make it go up so I can find the store button? Let's see if I can make it go away. Okay, I'm just gonna scoot it like this. We're gonna open the store. And in the Silhouette Design Store, we're gonna type e-learning in progress, just like this, no hyphens or anything. And you'll see the design right here. This is free in the design store. You will go through the steps. So right here, if you haven't already gotten it, like I have, there's, there will be a cart button. You'll add it to your cart, go through all the checkout, and then you'll be able to see it. You see the different, are they seeing what they're supposed to see? Oh, they it are? wasn't okay. on the store. Could you see the store? No, because it's on my... Let oh, me got switch it. that. Let's see. New share. Okay, let's show you this one more time. Good. Okay, so we typed in e learning in progress right here. This is the design that you want. You're going to double click it. There will be a cart option right here. We've already bought it, so it's not here anymore. You'll add it to your cart, go through the checkout process, and then after you've finished the download, now I got to switch back. We're going to come back to Silhouette Studio, go to our library, and if you have a million things like we do, the Silhouette Store is my favorite. They have so, so many, many cute things, and whenever I feel like I'm in a creative funk I'll just scroll through and oh, I'll see so many designs and I'll just want to make something again so in the store it has a hyphen so if you're looking trying to sort through all your things so we're going to double click to open it on here as you see there are two different designs there's one where the leaves go all the way around and there's one where there's just a top and a bottom so just pick whichever one you like best and bring it over onto your canvas right here <clears throat> excuse me we're going to stick with this one. And if you don't have slats in your wood like we do, you don't, you can just cut this as is. We have the slats, so we want to make sure that our words fit. So we just got a ruler and found where the slats are. And then we came and using our grid, we know that there's one slat at six inches and then the other two are two and a half inches away. So I'm just marking those with a line so I know where the slats are. Oop. So that I can make sure that my words fit. So you can see here that this e-learning would go right over one, of, one the of the slats and would make it hard to read. So what we're going to do is ungroup it a couple times until we can move the words. Let's see. Nope, not yet. I'm actually just going to cut a corner here and release the compound. Nope, that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep ungrouping. There we go, okay. So what you can do 
is you can just scoot this up and recenter it, move things around within those lines. So we would just do like that so we know that it's not going to land right on the slats. And I'm actually going to bring these up a little just to center them. And there you go. So you would just send it. But first you'd want to delete those lines, right? Thank you for reminding me. You're going to want to delete the lines because otherwise it will cut that. And we need to make it a compound path again to cut it. Okay, so our design is ready. We're going to go to send. Why aren't, oh, cut. Why isn't it doing anything? Is it because we're not plugged into a computer? So we're just going to pretend <laughs> if we are plugged into a machine. So if we were plugged into a machine, we'd have red lines around our design. We'd adjust to the material. So you could do stencil material. You could do adhesive vinyl, whatever you want to do and check your action, check your tool, and then load the material into your machine and click it to send. So with that, we have ours. We still need to weed a little bit. So this was ours. We're doing it on vinyl, but like we said, you can use stencil paper or stencil material. I've used sticker paper for a stencil before. Yeah, whatever you have around. Um, or if you're not even really into stenciling, then we'll get, we'll tell you another yeah, option Some people for like that. it. Some people don't like it. Some people are paint people. Some people aren't. Yeah, it's true. Some people like it to look like they painted it by hand, yes. like each letter. I love you do that. hand lettering, mm -hmm. which we don't. Not at all. Um, yeah. So you'll just finish weeding. Do you want me to give you the, or do you want to give me the, yeah, I want to know what machine you're working on right now. Are you using a Cameo, Cameo 4? Do you have the Cameo 4 Plus? Have you, are you using a portrait? Tell us what machine you're using. Our first machines were portraits. Yes. How many oh years ago gosh. do you think that was? Like Probably six or five seven. or six years ago. Yeah. And I just remember when I got the box, I was like, it was like, <laughs> like those movies where like you open the treasure chest and it glows. Yeah. It was like that for me. Like I opened the box and it was like it glowed and the angels sing. Cause it's like the things it unlocks for like you're creating is so amazing. And even though the portrait is so little, it does so, so much. Yeah. Okay. And I am so excited that now there's a newer version of so the portrait. So excited. You can see it right here. It's, it's so, so cute. Love it. Okay. So we've weeded our stencil and now we're going to transfer it. So we need our transfer tape. Can you get the scissors, Liz? I'd like to. We're just going to lay this on top of here. Also, okay. I want to know who of you are out there doing e-learning? Are yeah. any of you out doing it? How is it going? Tell us about it. I'd love to hear how you're surviving it because it's, you got to it be made so of tough hard. stuff. It is so hard. Yeah. All right, so we have put our transfer tape on. We're using a scraper to make sure it's on here really good. Doesn't need to be perfectly smooth. We just wanna make sure, especially like these little babies, mm -hmm. we wanna make sure that they transfer well. And then I like to flip it over like this. Not everything, do you guys see? <laughs> This is so like my craft table at home. My husband, whenever he has to work on that table, he puts a blanket over the top of it because he never knows what's wet from like a mess that I made before, like a bottle. <laughs> so he just covers so he just it. He brings a blanket and puts it over and then he works at that table. All right, so now we have this and we can kind of see through it where the, oh yeah, okay, thanks where the lines are. So yeah, that should be good. Sorry, I have a big head. That's something that <laughs> runs in our family. It does. <laughs> Liz doesn't have it. I do. I have I it. I certainly do. All right, so we've put this on. Now we're, we want this to really adhere nicely. 
So I'm going to push it hard. I'm putting my muscles into it. Whoa. Yes, because you don't, you want it to be as tight as possible so you have the least amount of paint coming out of your design edges. Yeah, that's right, Liz. Okay, so now this part can be a little tricky because the vinyl wants to stick to, the, to the, the transfer and it wants to stick to the wood. So we're going to see. So just be patient. See like this. Mm. So we're going to lay it back down, scrape it some more. This is going to be. I'm going to let you do it because I'm scared now. No. Okay. So you get to entertain everybody. Okay. Oh, gosh. Can you sing for us? <laughs> no, but I will tell you. Um, we have done so many silhouette projects and we, I probably, I mean, how many, what's the percentage of just because of user error that you have to redo something or remake something? Yeah. I mean, and it's because we move at a million miles yeah, a I second. Wanted to get, that's the great thing about a silhouette is that it helps you take shortcuts with certain things. And like Sam said, makes them look handmade when maybe they really aren't, but I still want to move so fast. And if I just did it right. It'd be so good all the time yeah. because it's such a reliable machine, but I'm not a reliable person. So what are some of your favorite tips that help you get it right the first time? Um, like I know we I love, love the, the test, test cut. Feature. Yep. Yes. If you're not using the test feature, you got to, it saves so much trouble. And um, if I would just do that sometimes every I just, time, I'm just pretty certain that I got it, that yeah. I know what I'm doing and I don't. Yeah. I'm going to get this. Can I help hold it down? Yeah, it's just these little babies. Good things take time. Yeah, they do. And that's crafting, that's life. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there though. <laughs> we're getting Let's there. See. These little letters, we just have to really treat them with care. Yes, definitely, because you don't want those insides of the letters especially to come out. No. Okay, look, <laughs> we're doing good. So good. We're halfway. Isn't that fun that what you can see is in progress because you're in progress with what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Thank Liz. You. That's okay. some gentle comedy for you. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm just inching it down. You're doing so good. Okay, this is what I want to know is what, so like fall is when you get like the real crafting bug, like fall decor, getting ready to make gifts. What is everyone making? For the fall what are we making what's the exciting thing i we started decorating some pumpkins on our blog prettylifegirls.com and on our instagram you can see some at pretty life girls we did some with tattoo paper which if you've never used your silhouette to make tattoos and use their tattoo paper you have to because you can print anything on the tattoo paper and then you can transfer it onto so many different surfaces and pumpkins is one of them so you can make custom tattoos uh -oh. and then oh, it's fine. right at the end. I was almost there. Don't look, just look at me. Don't no, look it's at fine. Me. <laughs> but you can make custom tattoos and you'd be surprised what the surf, like they can go on wood. They can go, we've done them on Easter eggs and they adhere beautifully to, to pumpkins. So you can print we've off We've done like, them on mugs too. Mugs. So you can print off really pretty intricate designs and then transfer them, print them off on your tattoo paper, do your print to cut feature and then put them on your pumpkins and it will look like, because the thing I like about tattoos is it goes on, it's so thin. So you don't have like any, you can't tell where it starts and ends. And so it looks so, it's almost like part of the pumpkin. Yeah. It's so pretty. You it's have like to do that. It's like it's printed on it or something. It is. We have one of those two, we have one of those pumpkins on our Instagram right now, Pretty Life Girls. You'll have to go see. And on, tons of them on our blog. Yeah. Okay. We did it. Yes, Samantha. It got stressful. You did amazing. But that's how it was when I made it the first time. That was so how So luckily was. I wasn't surprised. Okay, I'm going to get a little piece of this to okay. okay, so now we are going to paint. I just bumped the inside of this bow. Okay, so tips for stenciling. Yes, so um, one of our favorites, so this, this paint is folk art, and that's made by Plaid Crafts, which you can also get at Michael's. And we spent, we went to um, their headquarters in um, Atlanta several years in a row um, with some other makers. And we learned from their artists about stenciling. I feel nervous telling you what to do and then I'm worried about ruining it, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Well, remember this wood has a mind of its own. That's it. Because it has a lot of texture. So there's a lot of places mm -hmm. for the paint to go. 
So the best thing to do when you're stenciling is load your brush and then basically empty your brush. <laughs> so blah, 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 until you've worked out a ton of the paint. Because the last thing you want it to do is have a lot of paint on your brush and then go onto your stencil and have it all leak out. So load your brush, then unload your brush, basically, and do it with patience. So plan on doing it in different um, layers. layers. So yeah. do a layer, let it dry, do a layer, let it dry. So you want very little paint on your brush and then you just go up and down because that just gives less paint to flow. Exactly. You don't want the, you don't want it to move like a liquid. Yeah. You just want it to adhere as little as possible. To go right only where you're putting only it. Where you're and don't brush, go up and down. And then that's not going to like give you a totally amazing coverage the first time but it's going to save you time because it's going to be more precise and then you'll go back in again and again if necessary whatever you got to do yeah now you tell us some tales okay Samantha. well while you're doing this one okay. i'm going to speak to this other option Great. I um, feel like this is very loud hammering noise that's okay <laughs> so we have this board here that is uses the other design but we just did that one with vinyl so um, you're going to weed opposite of what you did with this. So with this one, we took out the design and left the rest for a stencil. For this one, we weed the excess and leave it on here. So we cut this, we've weeded it. And again, we're going to use transfer tape to move it. Our other one is still pretty wet, but I'm going to get this vinyl ready to move over. But it's just nice to have the option mm -hmm. if you like, like we had said earlier, if you like paint, you like the look of that, you like it a little more rustic, you or look a little more handmade, a little more handmade, then you can do it that way. If, or if you want to spend a little more time on it, then the stenciling is good. Yes. If it's like a therapeutic thing for you, which it is so for me. Yeah. But if you want something that will come together quickly, that I did a terrible job putting that on there, <laughs> that will be really precise. Um, like if you are going to paint it a bright color, then the vinyl would really pop against that. Oh my gosh. Or maybe you live in an apartment building and you're putting it on your door that's like in an interior hall or something. And so it's not going to be out in the elements. Vinyl works great for that too, because I mean, there's outdoor vinyl, obviously, but it doesn't really matter how strong it is if you like live in an apartment building and your room, your front door is in your hallway or something like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we like that there are different options using the same machine. Yes. To accomplish. Oh my gosh, I tried project. to figure out a way to do it less noisy and it it's doesn't fine. exist. You're so doing so, such so a sorry. good job. You're doing <laughs> such a good job. Oh my goodness. Okay. How are we doing on, do we have any questions or anything? Are we doing good? Let's see. Doing good. This one isn't rocket science. No. It's pretty self-explanatory. It is, but. You're doing so good. Thank you. I'm trying to go fast and not loud, but it's very tricky. It's just loud. It's just kind of loud. So then after you did this, you would just go over it a few more times until you like it. Yes. And you could even like peel it back a little and, so we can and do that see, right now and see if it has enough contrast. So you can see, right I guess there. I don't have to lift. No, just on this I would say, part. I would probably only go through one more time. Yeah. It's going to be the letters that you're going to want to give the most care to because you want to be able to tell what they say. Yeah. These, this outside piece is obviously going to be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, if you feel like the letters just aren't getting as clear as you want, take a paint pen and, and edit them a little bit or, or a little brush or a little brush and fill them in a little bit. Um, give yourself permission to just like do whatever you got to do mm -hmm. to make it look how you want it to look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I liked using this chalk paint because it dries matte. The coverage is really the good. Coverage the coverage is good. Dry. But an acrylic paint would be fine too, a multi-surface. I do see how using a darker stain really lends itself well to stenciling because you're going to be able to make out what it's saying a little bit easier than if you use like mm -hmm. a blonde stain. Yeah. Um, that would make it a little bit trickier to see exactly what. Yeah. So I guess you could do a lighter stain and then stencil with black words mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So 
You would probably go over it again. One or two more times. Let it dry completely between coats, but we but will we'll pretend. For a reveal. Okay, so here is this piece. Mm -hmm. And you can see right there I went over. So that's like a place where you could just take your stain brush and just and go, go over right it. over the top of that baby. Okay. Let's keep where's our hook? Oh, oh you it's got pretty it. Good. It's pretty you good. You did really good. Yeah, if you had gone over it one, one more, more time, time, it would have been perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then I'm just gonna use our weeding hook to get these inside pieces out. Just by comparison, I'll let you see the finished one so you can get an idea. Oh, I have a hard time with the direction. Look. Sorry. <laughs> I moved the whole table. Okay. We're very poised. Okay, there. So you can see one more yeah. coat would probably do that. Yeah, on this one, I had I shrunk down these words a little bit so that I could fit them within here. On this one, I moved the words up. So that's why the font looks a little bit different because this one they were squeezed. Got it. Yeah, but just do whatever you like best. Yeah, however you want it to look. All right, so it's then cute. we keep pulling off all these guys. I think removing the stencil is so rewarding. So rewarding. Like, and if you if you do it nice and slow, then you can count on not having a bunch of leaks once you do that. Mm -hmm. And it's much more fun to peel back <laughs> yeah. if you don't have a bunch of leaks. Yeah, if you can get it right the first time. Yes. That is so fun. Okay. All right, Liz. Um, I don't think anyone is doing any leaks. Sorry. Okay. Um, we just have a question about how you preserve a stencil. Oh, cool. Okay, so you wouldn't preserve a vinyl stencil. You would want to use the multi or the stencil material. It's a lot more hardy. The only thing is that it works better for bigger designs. So something little like this that has all these little bitty words and little insides, it will be hard to preserve that when you are cutting it, weeding it, transferring it from one thing and then transferring it back the likelihood of keeping all those little pieces are really, really tricky. So in this type of a design, I personally would just recut vinyl every time because the vinyl is full, it's foolproof mm -hmm. and it's cheaper and it, you just will be less likely to mess it up. Um, but if you are doing a bigger design that you want to use and reuse, then the stencil material is the way to go. It's a lot heavier it's hardy but again works better with less intricate designs that are like one solid piece as far as preserving them um at plaid they would sometimes wipe it with like an alcohol wipe to get some of as much paint off as they could and then you could transfer it onto transfer tape and save it that way so um clean it however you can paint dries and is meant to stick so you yeah. don't get it all off but get off what's wet get off what, what can come off, and then put it on a piece of transfer tape, roll it up and store it somewhere. Yeah. Great. Does that answer the question sufficiently? <laughs> I, almost, I almost have all these babies off. You're doing so good. It's a labor of love. It is. I know that's the coolest thing about Silhouette is that it can cut such intricate things, but sometimes when you look at the design store and you see something really intricate and beautiful, you get so excited and then you cut it not thinking how much weeding yes. is going to be involved in making something so intricate and beautiful, which it's so nice once you get it all done, but you never think about it in the moment when you're so excited to buy it and make it, how much weeding you're going to have to do. But something that can help with those more intricate designs is reverse weeding. So I didn't try that on this, but it probably would have been helpful. And it's where you cut the whole thing, you put it on the transfer tape and you pull all the vinyl off and then you weed it so that all the little pieces are stuck oh, to the transfer oh, so tape. Smart. So that's a good little tip for if you are cutting the more intricate things. Why have you never told me that tip? I don't, I think it's on our blog. Oh, oh, is it really? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> I must have not wrote that post no, because you didn't. I did not know that. And I, I am amazed. That is fine. It's fine. Now you know. So, okay, we've got this guy all done. So the last thing we're going to do is hang it. Let me move this over here. 
Um, okay, so we've got our staple gun here. We're gonna take some jute and we're just going to carefully flip this over and measure about how much, what do you think, Liz? Like, is that good? Yeah, a little bit more, like that. Okay, we're gonna cut it. Great. And then we're gonna just staple it. So you can see. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna do one right here. I'm gonna do two for good measure. And then two here. I've also noticed some of these at Michael's have the things Something on. This one actually did. This one did, but it was so that, oh, it was so that the slats were vertical and I, it. it would make it hard to read. So I just took that one off. Yeah. So don't feel like you have to have a staple gun. Just go to Michael's and get one that's already ready to go. Yeah. And then this whole thing is so ready cute. and people who come to your door will think you're so cute and then they'll leave and get cookies and then come back. If they're, if they're worth anything, they will. If they're good neighbors mm -hmm. or friends. So, oh, so cute. Okay. Are we going to put it, the other one on this one now? Oh yeah. Let's okay. do it. It might be a little bit wet, but we'll see if we can well, still get it to the process. This. If this is how you decide to do it with his, which is just and straight vinyl. I seriously vinyl. did a terrible job. Like, like she said, there. this is damp. So, okay. That would be, <laughs> less It'll advise. it may not even stick, but we'll show you the process either way. Yeah. Just so you get the idea. We'll show you what not to do, possibly. Yeah. You'll do this, and then you'll cross your fingers that it comes up. <laughs> I seriously did such a bad job transferring it. I'm not proud. It's just the pressure. There's a lot of pressure a lot here. Of pressure. If you want, you can just show them that, and I'll switch it for this one, and then. It's not sticking, so. Okay, let's switch. We'll do a switch. Ready, magic. And then you peel the transfer <laughs> tape. And it's even on a different board. Can you believe it? Wow. <laughs> but this one is done with vinyl. So you can see the difference. And I mean, really, unless you got up right close to it, you wouldn't even know that it was vinyl. Mm -mm. It's so cute. This one was just done on a piece of Sam's old, like, entertainment center, right? Yeah. That you had. My kids kept kicking it off of, like, you know, those little, like, things you stick in the holes to like change where oh, the shelf yes. goes. Yes. It would just be on those and my kids would kick them so they were like. That is repurposing right there. So yes, so just transferred the vinyl on, peeled it off, connected That's your it. jute the same way. Yeah. So cute. And this one came together in like three minutes. So fast. So if you like a fast turnaround, and I love this other design too. It's really cute. Yeah, that's not the full circle. Yeah. So cute. And if cookies aren't your thing, switch out the text on there or because you could ungroup it enough times to remove that out and switch it Just with like whatever Just like try to thing. find a similar font yeah. and type it in there. Yeah. What would your thing be? I would say Diet Coke or babysitter. <laughs> Unless you're a babysitter or teach math. <laughs> that is so good. I what would yours it. say? Well, cookies or brownies uh -huh. or I mean anything sweet. We just had scotcheroos right before this, right before. I just love it. You know, I know in some places those are called special K bars, so. Special K bars if you're not a Utah person. <laughs> yes. Hey, oh, well, thank you guys so much for watching with us. Thank you to Michaels and Silhouette. We are such fans. And if you make this, we would love to see what you made. Be sure to tag us, the Pretty Life Girls, tag Michaels, Silhouette, so that we can all see what you made. And good luck with the e-learning. Good luck. I mean, good. I hope someone brings you cookies. I really do. If we were your neighbors, we would. We would. Uh, you can find more projects like this and tips about silhouette that I had never heard before <laughs> in my life, like reverse weeding, <laughs> on our blog. That's prettylifegirls.com or at Pretty Life Girls on Instagram. And be sure that you're following Michael Stores and Silhouette to see all of the crafts that they're doing, all the different classes they're doing. It's so much fun. Thank you for crafting with us. Thank you.